After hearing all my circles, my heart gives me a season America's seven, episode three. Hero, Star and Stripe made an urgent visit to Japan. It was a brief visit, but memorable. It looked like she had the advantage in their fight until Shigaraki managed to touch the hero. I feel like she didn't do her research. <laughs> she like rushed in like a true American. Relatable. We make the rules as we go. <laughs> this was a really fun way, a really fun opportunity to look at America from an outside perspective, represented by Star and Stripe. It's no real surprise, given what I think we can see about the author based on his creation, that although America can be a really touchy subject internationally and domestically, it feels to me that in a sense he took the high road where it's like, what is the ideal? How can I take the strongest form of the argument, so to speak? So it ends up feeling like a comment to some degree, but still creating a character that fits in with the overall ethos and real heart of My Hero Academia, which, you know, in my opinion, is something that would transcend countries anyway. The older I get, the more cynical I am about the idea that, you know, a country or, or a group of people is special because of the borders they inhabit, the set of circumstances that led to its size or creation or what have you. I've also grown to think, no matter what country you're talking about, it's probably a mistake to identify one-to-one -one the government of a country and the people of the country. Though, of course, there's a whole can of worms there. What's probably going to end up mattering in the long run is the same things that always matter, which is going to be the, the ethics, the morals, the character, combined with the actions of individuals. Some of which I think Star represents really well. You know, this whole, I'm willing to break the rules to do what's right. I'm not going to rely on status quo to follow my heart. I'm willing to take a great personal risk for excellence. The individual journey and individual decision making is something really important to keep in mind and not let that get consumed by groupthink. To me, one of the things I like the most about sort of this original American spirit is this drive for innovative excellence. It's a sort of rebelliousness aimed at being an individual combined with productivity and service, much like Star. Again, ultimately, America does not have any ownership on these things. These are things that are available to anyone, which is really great news. Star actually created a little bit of long for me. I loved it. I loved her take on those ideals I'm talking about. I even love the dramatic flair that comes with that, right? But it was like more of an idealized image than I think Americans really think about or focus on. In fact, I think there's a huge opportunity in American media these days because if you watch TV shows, largely speaking, the main characters who we're supposed to root for, you know, they all, they can be great characters and great people, but they have to have like some, some terrible flaw or something that makes them really sad, you know? They have a drug problem or an alcohol problem or they can't get over a loved one's death. What I like to call sad boy characters. Everyone's just a sad boy. I mean, maybe that's why the Marvel series gained such tremendous traction early on. It's like, finally, finally people who represent America that are good and clean and want good things and like are fighting for the best and are mavericks and have the spirit of America. It's like not common anymore. So it was really nice to get that from a Japanese author. I found it really touching. Look at you in your little cave. There's no need to fret. <laughs> He's so condescending. I can't tell how much of it is good sense of humor. Is he hilarious or unintentionally hilarious? Our consciousnesses are combining. I can feel it. We can all feel it and we can see it. Rest easy. You mustn't dwell on one failed plot when there are so many in play. Give all for one this, in terms of positive qualities. He's never shaken. There is no failure for him. There are just momentary setbacks. That is actually something he has in common with the heroes. Apologies. I ask you to prepare for action. Oh, hello. You and I are quite similar, except for one thing. You have a face. <laughs> I craft alternative routes years, sometimes decades in advance. I begin by following the path that best suits my needs. Uh, he he also talks a lot. And it's a lot. Slot, I simply switch to another. Yes, you mentioned that. Actually, in that light, the cave is kind of great. He's in this hole. He's hiding in a little hole. Yet nothing changes about the quality of his speech or his confidence. Totally unperturbed by events. I map infinite routes. I guess it's not so much confidence as it is arrogance. They can look like the same thing, though. Unlike you, Toya, I have many friends. I knew I was right. Wait, wait, what? Wait, is this the return of the spy, the insider? Is that Invisible Girl? I knew I was right to bash her. I was right all along. Wait, let me, let me not <laughs> jump to conclusions. It was just one still image of her. It's her, Ayama. Actually, my long held guess wasn't either of them, but was Nezu, if I'm being perfectly honest. Villain. Oh, yeah. Time for training. It's so cool. It's so cool. It feels like such a long time since we've been training at the school. And despite everything that's happened, their spirits are overall positive. It hasn't broken them. Oh, yes, the most dangerous and important attack. Working on their team attacks. These are just in a league of their own. They're being animated or drawn older. My improved cluster attack comes from me flinging around beads of sweat, then exploding them together. That upgrade That's just pretty cool. I'm leveling up all <laughs> He's telling this to Deku's unconscious body. I can almost regulate my left side as well as I control my right. That's great. This balance. Will withstand Dobby's flames. 
So much symbolism there. I mean, obviously. The evils that you see and experience, the things that you hate, can end up being contributive forces to your greatest strengths. Todoroki is made better and stronger by understanding the danger of his father's side, but also recognizing the other side to that, which is him being Todoroki, him really deeply understanding the, the evil, has a higher form of mind from which to make decisions, and therefore can control the power and use it for the things that are useful, helpful, benevolent. So it ends up being not the one power or the other, the one parent or the other, this good, this bad, but all power, and I decide how I wield it. And that's something Dabi can't do. <laughs> That was one stuck in the hatred of his past. Working in harmony. Exactly. Bet we can take all for one in the league down easy when we find them. Don't underestimate them. Since All Might defeated all for one, we haven't been able to track down the boss man himself. He's the best there is at going underground. He's literally underground. And don't forget we've lost half our numbers since then. At this point, we may be no match for him. It's you guys. They're the ones who get to decide when and where we face each other. And how? For one, stole Ragdoll's search ability so he can spot quirks from basically anywhere. With any luck, New Order ate that power up. And they can still accumulate. This is why our next move is vital. I have to force Shigaraki out into the open and fast. In this serious conversation, they hurry have not changed his you hair. You do mean we, don't you? <gasps> yes, this is the world's greatest hero. Seems like every time we think we've got all for one on the ropes, he gets the last laugh. For now. You've been mopey ever since Gunga No point dwelling on that. I mean, we've all felt bad, but you took things extra hard. You have no choice, son. This is a this is European. This is European. All for one's out of prison now, so things will go exactly as he wants them to. You know if blackmail you maybe. Orders, he'll murder blackmail, yeah, yeah. I want to leave this blackmail. Oh, it is you. And invisible girls keeping tabs. Wait, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ooh, this is crazy for Invisible Girl. <laughs> Sorry, Invisible Girl, again. I feel like I'm seeing her for the first time. She's got a sweetheart. Come to think of it, it's surprising that more of them haven't been blackmailed like this and haven't succumbed to this kind of thing. But how did Ayama have this time, do all this underhanded stuff while he was on his quest for cheese? Is the cheese just a cover? I don't know, even know what to believe anymore. Is the cheese just a lie? The villains somehow knew we'd be at the USJ. It also doesn't mean it's just him. I don't want to do this. He's also the it seems like he's the least connected to the other students. Behind our backs, Aoyama was... This is a lot of power in Invisible Girl's hands, or like a big decision to make. If we'd known what was in store for us, we wouldn't have sought said devil out. I swear it. We never would have let Alpha One give you a quirk. Oh, is that how he got his quirk? I've got to find a teacher. Or anyone. Find Deku. If anyone found out what I've done, the guild would crush me. It's, I, it's already crushing you, my dude. Then when All for One was caught at Kamino, for a moment I thought... Free. I was free. I would finally be free. Yeah, that's devastating. In that case, you know what you have to do, darling. I do not. I do not. I don't love the mother in this. All right, sympathy. She's she's afraid for her life. But man, I mean, do your own evil. Don't push that on your son. Oh, this is excruciating to think about. Ayama having been here for all this time, watching all these kids do all these great things, living with the knowledge that he's betraying them, while also living in relative solitude compared to the rest of them. Like he just doesn't ingratiate himself with the cast as much as the other students do with each other. I'm curious because there's definitely a feedback thing there. It could be that he's just naturally less socially inclined and so it's more difficult for him to make friendships and his relative isolation makes it easier for him to do betrayal. But what feels more likely is that it's because of the betrayal that he he can't really allow himself to get too close or it would be too painful to get close. Every moment of friendship, compassion, fun, joy would be undercut by massive amounts of guilt and self-loathing at what he's doing. A horrible gut-wrenching situation. Meanwhile, mom, the one he's a name trying to save and protect, is pushing him and coercing him to do these terrible things in clear direct opposition to what he feels is right. For all this time to have lived this way without really having any friends for that reason, just completely alone, it is not enviable at all. Help your parents. Oh! Oh, he just showed up. His meddling sense was tingling. Again, his true quirk. Oh, she sent him. The traitor is... What are you talking Ooh. about? How absurd. This is a situation. Of course it's you. Let that go in, let that go in. I was the only one who couldn't say anything. Everyone else yeah. was called out to you. It was sort of noticeable towards the end of season six, wasn't it? I stayed silent. Who's the real invisible one now? His power is Aoyama, the true invisible girl. Was given to him by All Might, and All for One wants it. Oh, he's kind of kind of inspired by Deku on the other side. I could tell you were upset. You were the only one who looked sad, so I came looking for you. You're just digging in the knife deeper, Deku. Yeah, he was skipping out on stuff recently. Deku's not gonna be mad, though he will be surprised. I am a revolting villain. Oh, this has got to feel so great, though. This has got to feel so great. Finally. 
This is the beginning of the end for this villain arc for Ayama. I think the solution to this is for Deku to finger blast Ayama's mom. She's the real villain. Still could be Nezu, though. Because unlike you, Toya, I have many friends. A bunch of friends, friends plural. Are... Great. Yes, powerful friends like Aoyama and Ayama's mom. If they fail, I sigh and say, oh, well. Then I forget them and adjust my course and carry along with my day. He's following a very strong pattern of nature, which is redundancy. They both came from wealth. As children, they wanted for nothing, knew only love and happiness. Speaking of societal, generational, parental baggage. When my future looked uncertain, they did something desperate. Made a deal with the devil. My parents tried their best. They went through so much to give me a better life. Time to shake this. My dream started as a desire to conform. But now, I want to do what Mama and Papa did for me. To help others. It's cool. It's really interesting. I never thought this would come from Ayama, but it's almost like a, a shadow Deku. The show's made it very clear it's not about the power, but about the underlying spirit. The quirk gives Deku the ability to do great things, but it's not what makes him great. What makes Deku great is his outlook and who he is. Getting the quirk is, is not the thing. Wanting a quirk to be like everyone else is not it. Wanting a quirk to make mommy and daddy happy is not it. Though both are certainly understandable and not totally unsympathetic. One for all. <laughs> who just... Who? My body Whoa! To my body. This is so cool. Finally! You sat in class like you weren't involved. How could you sleep at night in the same dorm? Whoa! Night? Finally, I'm seeing it for the first time. Agakure's freed you. Do you see that? Yes, that's what I'm saying. You don't have to hurt anybody else. It's over. And it's not too late. Stop fighting, please. We'll work this out. Oh yes, just lean into Deku's warm, comforting, <laughs> strong hands. <laughs> has to receive the quirk from all for one of This is, years ago. it's gonna be brutal for a while. It's gonna be brutal for a while. You're gonna have to go through all the shock and horror of your classmates and All Might, oof, All Might knowing this. It's gonna suck for a bit. That's your punishment, that's your penalty. Then you get to rebuild it. You know, I also understand the fact that things get harder to fix the longer they go on. Because there's the initial transgression multiplied by whatever time period you were engaged in whatever it was. Then stack upon that the fact that you knew it was wrong and continued to do it the whole time. And and you likely kept it a secret the whole time and were harboring this the whole time. So the longer things go on, the more getting out of it means confessing to a larger and larger, bigger and bigger crime or trespass. There's a point when it's too late, like you've already crossed the line and it's going to be terrible. There's going to be fallout. But like you want to go through that fallout period as, as early as possible. And, you know, Ayama had to think about this some more. There were casualties, right? That's on him. That's never going to be undone. If you're lucky enough, there's no permanent damage done. There's something that's irreversible. For Ayama, there might there may be, I think his actions probably led to casualties. But in real life, I think the transgressions that you're harboring, probably the result of you coming clean will be hurt feelings, which no one wants to have caused or face up to. But bright side, people probably will recover. And the earlier you try to make amends and let truth come out in the light, the more of a chance people have of sort of getting over the pain and moving on with their lives. At this point, we can't deny it anymore, can we? There's a traitor at this school. It's a long I time never thought it would building. Be a student. I thought it was you. <laughs> if Agakure hadn't stumbled on you today, what would you have done for him next? I don't Is he hugging it. her? Yeah, man! Say it isn't true! This is also kind of rough. What weakens his case is that he didn't confess. He was discovered. So there's a question of like, would he ever have come clean? Would he always have done this to the end? Knowing the kids, what I think probably will happen is once this period has sort of allowed itself to pass and the dust clears, they will want to give him a chance to make amends, use this pain in service of their collective goal. We're still trying to restore a state of order, so it's imperative that you start talking. This guy's not slept or showered in a long time. We're to blame, not Yuga. I'm inclined to agree to some extent. Finally saw her face. All of you could have died because of me. I think some people probably did die because of you. My heart ached at how miserable my life was. I was disgusted with myself. All this all real, all this real. Instead of worrying about him. That's the benefit, the one silver lining of this. If you've really hit rock bottom, which this is clearly it, I mean, this is rock bottom, then you got nowhere to go but up. That night was a desperate cry for help, and it totally went over my head. I want to watch this episode again. I want to watch my reaction to that episode again. Because I promise you, you can still be a hero. Not so fast, Midoriya. <laughs> He's going to jail. <laughs> 
You could be a hero in jail. It's a serious crime. But no, I totally agree with Deku. There's a massive double standard I have seen in the world. And first notice to myself, where like, I want to be thought of not as a, a fixed person, but as somebody who is able to make mistakes and then move on and grow and change. I don't want everyone's perceptions of me to be carved in stone based on things I did, you know, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, even maybe last week. There's a certain amount of this that's fair, right? Like, what do people know of you other than what you say and what you do? And of course, we need to make generalizations about people to function and survive and know what to do and, you know, who to let into our lives, who to trust, etc. But I don't want to think about myself as a person to be solely a function or result of the things I've done, the events in my life, the words I've said. Part of the value of a human soul also lies in their potential. Otherwise, we're all sort of doomed. And if you really want that and value that and are aiming for the best and believe in the potential of people and want the world to be great, want yourself to be great, as difficult as it is, you want to push that as far as is possible and logistically sound, where if you can give people the benefit of a doubt and the chance to change, and there is still a chance for them to do good, then you you give it to them as you would want it to be given to yourself. That's the double standard I was alluding to. We want that for ourselves. We don't always think about other people that way. You know, I've seen that in a very inconsequential manner in shows where, you know, for example, Full Metal Alchemist, a certain character will reform. And then it's like, how can this person be allowed to have a happy ending given all the terrible things they've done? And it's like, yeah, on some level, we all get that, right? Like we get that there's damage you've done that you can't walk away from. You perhaps can't even be forgiven, but you still can be given a chance to live, you still can do great things. It's not the end of your story as long as you're alive. And you hope that actually those things end up informing the greatness that you can do. Deku, I think, is someone who sees Ayama for more than just the betrayal and, you know, the, the events they've shared together. Ayama has that same potential for heroism that Deku has so clearly found. Because it's an ideal, nobody has a monopoly on it and everyone has access to it. It's just difficult to find. But the highest thing you can hope for is everyone getting there. I imagine this is actually a very controversial take, but I like it. It's a tough situation but it doesn't erase the fact that he helped all for one. All this is true at once. We can't say for sure that what happened to Nagant won't happen to him. We shouldn't let him speak another word until we can get him checked out and cleared at Central Hospital. That is <laughs> fair. It's not that the logistics don't matter. We still have no idea where all for one is. But think, the board has changed. <sighs> But we're still at a disadvantage. Maybe you don't let him know that Ayama has been discovered. It's possible that Ayama is the only person in the world with the power to trick all for one. There you go. Some service you can do. Do the good you can do for now. I promise you, you too can be a hero. <laughs> Man, Deku just saving this kid's soul as he does, giving him a lifeline into not just being horrible. The benefit I think they have is that Ayama is credible. You can't spend that much time with someone and not know generally the rough nature of who someone is. So he's been harboring this secret. There's been deception. He's done terrible things. It feels credible to trust him that he wants to change and that he will help and he would not betray them again. Though I think they really have to address the issue of his parents' safety. That would help a lot. <laughs> I'm sort of attached to my Nezu as a traitor theory. So I wouldn't say that about hand yet, but it is very exciting. This is a very interesting episode. This is only episode three of season seven. It's packed so far. Star and Stripe came in a blaze of glory and left in a blaze of glory. We had the, the whole traitor thing in one episode, basically. After all these seasons and years, Invisible Girl showing her face figuratively and literally. Once again, a deep apology to Invisible Girl. She's no longer invisible to me. The class also showing their collective heart. I mean, I think it wouldn't be satisfying if they're like, eh, that's cool, you know, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, they're gonna give him grief. They're gonna be shocked and horrified. Some of them may even hate him for a while, but that's not where they're gonna land. You know, where they're gonna land is we care about you and we also wanna see you join us up here, you know? What is great about the collective cast of the students is they have this unifying vision of greatness. Everything they do is in service to that greatness. And so they're gonna wanna contribute to that greatness. They're not gonna wanna tear down Ayama. They're gonna wanna see him become great. They're not selfish about it. They're not competitive about it. They're just tapped into something really beautiful and they love beauty for beauty's sake. And if they can get Ayama there, if they can you know, get over the initial shock and pain and turn that into sympathy and love, which I think is very possible here, they will absolutely do that for him.